Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Tarek and the series on the Saga of Super Sega because it is getting absolutely weird out there. The money is now changing hands and I am here with one last video to warn you in every way I possibly can as clear as day. Do not give these people your $3 deposit because it comes with a lot of catches. There's been a lot of new developments on the PCB and I've done a little bit of history and digging on the people involved in this project. We're going to talk about all of that today, but I can't stress enough what Super Sega is showing you on that PCB is non-functional. It is not running games. A lot of people much smarter than me have gone over the PCB and I've talked to them and I can guarantee you that whatever they're showing on camera is it the best, a mock-up of something that's aspirational for the future and at worst something that is designed Designed to deceive you because it is not running an FPGA core for Sega Dreamcast. It shouldn't look like the way it does. Nothing about this project adds up whatsoever outside of the fact that they're now asking for $3 deposits that come with a guarantee that they can charge your card at any point in time they want for the full balance even if they don't deliver the actual project. And that is just not something that I would ever advise anybody to get involved in. Because since the inception of this project, when they showed off Dreamcast footage running, nothing about it looked right. It shouldn't be that good with just a lower frame rate. And now that we've had a chance to examine the PCB further, we can tell you that the USB port that they're controlling it with is just a pass-through. The traces are going directly to a USB port on the back, so it is just acting as an extension. And other eagle-eyed viewers found that the HDMI port that they were outputting video from had solder bridges between one pin to the other, which would make it completely non-functional as far as a video output is concerned. So whether whether or not there's anything on this PCB that ever could become a Super Sega FPGA console, I can tell you right now that nothing on this PCB is currently acting as a video game console. It is a prototype, maybe it's a work in progress, maybe it's a proof of concept, maybe it's nothing more than just to show something on camera so you believe in them when they say they are ready to take your money. As we go over to the website, it is as strange as everything else we've seen from this company, and that really is the dangling thread that we keep pulling over and over again. Nothing about this this adds up, nothing about it makes sense, but there is some information about some of the participants' previous projects that are going to lead you into understanding exactly what's going on here, or at least as close as we can. And again, there are those traces going from one USB port to the other, so when they're controlling this quote-unquote, you can't see me, buddy, I'm doing ear quotes, it is just a pass-through. And none of the documentation says that it's actually running on the FPGA chip as far as an FPGA code base is concerned. And honestly, it could be a situation where they're trying to just basically sell you a software emulation box and they're using the ARM cores on the FPGA chip to try to get that guise of FPGA technology because it is a very growing industry. And don't worry, it comes with four DB9 joystick ports so you can use today's or original joysticks. I'm not trying to mock them for the language barrier. I understand Spanish is their native language, not English, but if you are trying to take people's money and run a corporation, you do spell check in other languages. This is just basically shoddy from the top to the bottom. And of course, we had the situation where they showed the video where they were hard cutting between the game loading up clearly trying to hide something and they stated that they were trying to hide the load times but then the next day they come out with another video that doesn't have any load times but you can hear a mouse click in the background every single time they change games like somebody is changing the input source or otherwise loading something up in the background off camera and again I can assure you nothing on this PCB is going to be functional that LED array is basically just set up to light up lights like you would any other LED with no actual brain behind it but the worst part is now they are actively taking money and they're talking about continuing to take more money. And I can't stress enough in my professional opinion, in my personal opinion, giving Super Sega money would be an absolute mistake. Do not pre-order this thing. Do not put your credit card number down because again, you're not just giving them three euros or about 375 US dollars. You're giving them an authorization to pull the balance whenever they want to. And they're only guaranteeing support in 2025 if the project succeeds. So what's to say they don't just run your card and say the project failed and that is it? Because you'll see here, they only have one offer right now, the 375 euro pre-order, and it says at the bottom, reserve now by paying 3 euros and authorize Super Sega to charge you 375 euros when producing the first batch. So they're going to take money before they produce the first batch to guarantee that first batch out. And if you actually go over to the order page, at this point in time, I am not giving them $3 to find out what happens. It is going to be a waste of my money, I can guarantee it. It says by confirming payment, you will allow Super Sega to charge you for this payment in future Future payments according to the conditions stipulated. They can take your 375 euros or the equivalent in your local currency anytime they want. Now on the research side of things, the thing that I can 100% speak to is one of the developers of the Super Sega project 
previously worked on an 8K camera that basically kind of maybe existed but definitely didn't and the company went bankrupt. If Super Sega goes bankrupt, that makes you an unsecured creditor and that means you're in line to try to actually collect the money from them and I can guarantee you there's going to be no money left. That's just how these things work. And if you're wondering if Cinemartin ever shipped a project, they shipped one. It was a 4K panel basically to monitor your camera feed off your cinema camera, but it was found out that it was just a Chinese 4K panel in a plastic case that was rebranded with the Cinemartin logo on it. It was nothing that they developed or engineered. It was just a product that they found in a factory in China, purchased, and then resold for a profit, which is totally fine. Plenty of companies do that, but it doesn't give them any sort of track record for engineering outside of a net K cinema camera that never came to market, that was not really functional when it was sent to a few reviewers and quickly went bankrupt after that. And if there's one thing I do understand, it is cinema cameras. I am a cinematographer by trade. I was one of the beta testers for the first red camera when it was still owned by Jim from Oakley. I've been working in cinema for 21 years and trust me, Cinemartin is not a name you've ever heard of before. And I do love that they also have reviews from YouTubers with a star rating behind them. Commenters are apparently rating them on YouTube. Obviously, you know there is no sort of one to five star situation here. So this just seems to be strange. And honestly, a lot of their preview footage seems to be strange. If I could equate it to anything, it kind of feels like one of those late night Adult Swim infomercials you see that take a known format and basically change it around to make it as weird as possible while also making it seem recognizable. Because this is one of the developers of the Super Sega Project and this is a video they uploaded to their channel showing him on TV back in the day. I don't know if that's supposed to make us trust him anymore. I really don't know what in the hell they're trying to do here. But what I do know is they're trying to get you to give them three euros in the guarantee that they can charge your card 375 euros whenever they feel like it and based upon the pcb alone i can promise you this it doesn't run any games it is not doing anything all it is doing is passing through a usb signal from the front to the back and something else is happening off camera that is a guarantee definitive thing that i just can't stress enough this is not a working prototype is it possible that super sega thinks that they can actually make this and they're being optimistic that is a possibility because obviously that Fran 8k camera did exist it was something that somebody could hold in their hands and while it was basically non-functional it did do enough to understand that maybe somebody behind the scenes has some sort of engineering experience but as far as all the demonstrations we have seen on Super Sig FPGA's channel up to this point in time instill absolutely zero confidence that this board does anything these people do not have a track record they do not have successful projects behind them they have one bankruptcy and again if you give them money they don't supply a board or a console and you try to go after them you're an unsecured creditor you're at the back of the line and you will never get a penny back and i'm sure with the pre-order authorization here you do only have a certain amount of time to do a charge back on the credit card they would probably charge you the full balance of 375 and then tell you the console was ready to ship in 90 days putting you outside the charge back window on your card and at that point in time you have absolutely no recourse to recoup anything so let me stress again in as plain of language as i possibly can do not pre-order the super sega console do not give super sega a dollar of your money do not give super sega the authorization to charge your card 375 in the future if anything arrives at your doorstep my guess would be that it's software emulation on an arm core next to an fpga chip on that same chiplet but you never know what you might get there is a very big potential that you never get anything other than a 375 dollar deduction to your credit card because everyone wants an fpga dreamcast right now it is the next hot console for fpga PGA development and it seems like Super Sega is riding this nostalgia for Dreamcast as well as the desire to have a Dreamcast FPGA core to collect money for a project that may or may not ever happen and you know me you know the channel I do not like doing negative videos but when it comes to the point in time in which I think people are going to lose money on something that's not going to be delivered I have to tell you about that because I know when you watch these videos you trust my opinions on reviews you know I'm going to tell you the truth and nobody should give Super Sega get any money that board does not do anything currently multiple people smarter than me have looked at it and agreed but short of that we're done ignore super sega we'll see you guys next time bye bye